So, good evening, everyone. Uh, so, it's India. So, good evening, everyone. And good talk for everyone. So, uh, now, uh, so no, now we are sitting and having Zoom calls right here with the uh, high data transmission rate. But when we go to mass, we cannot have Zoom calls like this. Uh, we I cannot, uh, we yeah. cannot have data data rate of uh, 10, 10 GPS, 30 GPS. The maximum data rate that we, that we can achieve uh, from mass to earth is the current uh, communication system is about two megabits per second. So that's where uh, the problem uh, comes from the uh, radio signal communication. So if we have the uh, current with current communication rate, uh, the text would look like this. Uh, the earth will ask a send a wall text from someone from earth will ask send a wall text. And after, after 20 minutes later, you'll get a message like this. This is really annoying. So even if you see the uh, mass window, uh, when we can, uh, uh, during the spacecraft launches or anything, uh, it's about two years. Uh, because uh, because the Earth and Mars are uh, they quite uh, way, uh, distance between Earth and Mars quite varies uh, during time. So uh, this is the problem with the radio signal communication with Mars. Because during the perihelion of uh, the Mars, uh, with uh, the distance from the Earth and Mars is around 0 0.37 AU. And during this time, it takes around three units to transfer the data. And when it's farthest apart, uh, it takes around 20 minutes. And round time would be around 40 minutes, 40 or 42 minutes. But the problem occurs, even though we, if we can uh, uh, overcome these scenarios, but the problem occurs when these mass and Earth are in the conjunction position, where they are opposite sides of the sun. Uh, during this time, a interference because of the sun occurs, a radio interference. And uh, the, because of this radio interference, the receivers are not that much capable uh, to decode this interference. Uh, because the, the signal is amplified right before the receiver, uh, right before the receiver gets the signal. And this amplifier still adds the noise, noise to the uh, signal. And the other external sources okay. that add the uh, noise are cosmic rays and this uh, thermal noise by the receiver. So how does the rovers on the Mars connect, uh, co communicate with the Earth? So the message sent by the Mars the rovers are not directly sent to the Earth. They are first, uh, they need to uplink their data to the Mars uh, uh, orbiters. Like uh, uh, reconnaissance orbiter or globe uh, Odyssey orbiter. Uh, this orbiters will then send the data to the D-space network, which is in the geosynchronous orbit of the Earth. So even though with this uh, kind of uh, constellation communication, the data rate is 2 Mbps. This is the far best we have achieved right now. This is, uh, uh, but with radio, the signal loss is very high. Uh, this is the practical noise level that is estimated around uh, minus 215 uh, uh, dB watts per hertz at 10 gigahertz. Which is, for this, we need a very big, large amount of BSN, but which is not possible right now. Uh, so this signal noise and antenna gain, this uh, both play important role for uh, the high data transmission as well as uh, reducing the noise, signal noise and increasing the uh, uh, spectrum efficiency. So here you can see the rover picture on the Mars near the Victoria crater on the Mars. So if we have to uh, total uh, Google map this Mars, it with this rate of data transmission like one bit per pixel, it would take nine years. So that's why we are going, uh, if we go for laser communication, this could be done just in nine weeks. So the problem is not only the faster data transfer rate, but also the time that we get, uh, but in time uh, getting the data. So that's why we are moving for optical communication. Uh, where here we can see uh, it has a high speed data connectivity and it can uh, reduce the channel load, which is caused by the diffraction. And these relays are implemented in the pre, uh, this, uh, before, signal receives the, uh, before the signals are pre-amplified before receiving uh, signal. 
and they, uh, it has low noise noise trigger ratio and uh, by, uh, uh, obviously then it uh, increases the signal sensitivity so the novel approach for this receiver here we can see uh, by the uh, photon per bit receiver it uses a psa uh, amplification uh, amplification which is a near noiseless which which gives a, around 0 db noise uh, noise noise to for noise ratio so a signal uh, which has done as a qbbsk that is quadrature phase shift key which is combined with the carrier wave pump and uh, it sends to a copier state and then a uh, three signals are generated that is uh, signal pump signal and idler signal this can be uh, launched into the free space channel and then with the help of uh, attenuator we can remove the diffraction caused by the uh, external factors and uh, after receiving the signal this pump is uh, removed by pump recovery system and then it is passed to the pl so that the, this pll is maintained at a constant pace and uh, it has uh, phase sensitive gain with constant phase sensitive gain so that uh, it is ready to go into the psa so psa is uh, phase uh, sensitive amplification is done and where uh, the signal and idler are uh, separated from the pump and then they are uh, passed through the detector and uh, filter and then we in here with the help of uh, normal coherent receiver we receive the signal so here we can see the spectral efficiency versus the sensitivity of the signal uh, in this kind of uh, in this kind of uh, amplification they generally we use a first phase application application it is 64 ppm uh, type of uh, um, amplification where here as this uh, spectral efficiency increases the sensitivity of this ppm decreases only the uh, around uh, 0.1 the sensitivity is high but for longer uh, for more uh, spectral efficiency it is not useful that come uh, that becomes uh, hard for transmission of signal to mass whereas the uh, the psa patients to amplification is more efficient and more spec has more spectral efficiency as well as sensitivity to that spectral efficiency so uh, for uh, construction of this kind of relay system and uh, optical uh, optical relay system uh, we need to choose few positions like uh, during the up, uh, conduction period we can place this uh, uh, optical satellite uh, uh, at the polar position of this sun and as well as we can build a constellation around the uh, sun uh, between the earth and earth and mars with in a sun synchronous uh, way so that uh, the signal can be uh, transmitted and re uh, regenerated by the relays uh, and trans uh, with a high data speed of around uh, 10 gig uh, gigabytes per second yeah that's it. thank you